This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, does the NSA control Bitcoin? Can the NSA destroy Bitcoin? And in the process, we're going to talk about the main Bitcoin proof of work algorithm, which is SHA-256. This question comes from a bunch of you, most re recently from Big Money Bag, saying, how do you reconcile the fact that the SHA hashing algorithm was created by the NSA? You keep talking about how bad all these other cryptos are, but the federal government has the master key to Bitcoin. So this is one of the things we're going to ask and find out whether this is true. Now, the NS NSA, for those of you who are not in the U.S., the NSA stands for National Security Agency. It's an intelligence agency, and it's part of the U.S. Department of Defense. The NSA is the wonderful government organization that's probably listening to this video right now and spying on all of us. They spy on our, our iPhone, our, our cell phone communications. This all came out thanks to Edward Snowden's work where he showed how much uh, the NSA is violating our privacy and spying on not just the rest of the world, but also US citizens. So this is the group we're dealing with. And if they were in control of Bitcoin, this would definitely not be a good thing. So I see why people ask these questions. First question, did the NSA actually create SHA-256? This is why this rumor has so much power, because it actually was created by the NSA. It's one flavor of SHA-2, which was created by the NSA in 2001. SHA just stands for SHA, or SHA just stands for Secure Hash Algorithm. And if you look it up, there it's a series of hash functions that were created by the NSA. And so you have a, a bunch of them. You have SHA-224, SHA-256, SHA-384. SHA-512, uh, et cetera, and there are many different different varieties of this. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please hit that subscribe and like button. Maybe share this video with a few friends as well. So what is a hashing function? SHA-256, it stands for a hashing algorithm or hashing function. Basically, it works like this. You take an input, and that input can be any length or any size. So you just take some data, you put it into the SHA-256 function, and it spits out an output. This output is also known as a hash, which is why this is called a hashing algorithm. So you put something in this side, and it pop something else pops out the other side. And this has a cool function or, or a cool characteristic that the input can be of any length. So you can put in a, a five, five numbers or, or a five-letter word or something like this. The output is always going to be the same length. It's going to be a 256-bit number. That just means in binary, 256 zeros and ones. Here's an example of a 256-bit number expressed in binary. You can see it's a lot of zeros and ones. And each of these places is some power of two. So this first place here, I, b I believe, is uh, two to the zero, then two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, etc. So you can express this number in binary, in which case you get 256 bits. You can convert it to different uh, number systems as well. You could convert it to hexadecimal, which looks like this, or you convert you could convert it to what humans are, are most familiar with, familiar with now, which is the decimal system, or the zeros zero through uh, zero through nine, or the different digits that are used. Hexadecimal, for those of you who don't know, uses kind of an extended version. So binary just uses zeros and ones. Hexadecimal uses zero through nine, just like the decimal system, and then it adds a couple extra numbers. A stands for um, A stands for 10, B stands for 11, C for 12, D for 13, E for 14, and F for 15. So that's how that works. If you use, as, as I said before, if you use the same input, you're always going to get the same output. But as we're going to see, changing just one letter or just one small part of the input will give you a completely different output. And I'm going, to I'm going to demonstrate this for you and show you how you can test it yourself. Now, another interesting function of this is that you cannot figure out the input if someone gives you the output. It's a one-way street, so it always moves in this direction. If someone gives you the output, you can't go back and figure out the input. There's no reverse function for this. But what you can do is you can take that input and test it to see if it gives the required output. And this is what Bitcoin miners do as we're going to, as you're going to see. But you can't figure out the input. It's one way, one way street. If you put in the same input, you will always get the same output. Now, Bitcoin uses actually a double version of this. It's called double SHA-256. So you take the output from the first time 
and run it through the function a second time. So you drop something in the front here, it pops out an output. You take that output and stick it back here at the beginning, and it goes, it, you apply the function one more time to it, you hash it one more time, and you get a second output. That's what that's what double SHA-256 means. Now it's important to note that SHA, the SHA-256 hashing algorithm, this function, is not a black box or a secret. It was revealed to everyone by the NSA. This is public knowledge. I don't have an example of it to show you. You might be able to, uh, to look it up. What's surprising about this, though, is that anyone can do it with a pencil and paper. You can actually hash uh, with a pencil and paper. There, here's an, uh, a blog post that shows you how to do it, where this guy was actually mining Bitcoin with a pencil and paper. Obviously, that's not fast enough. It took him a whole day to do part of this, and we have these 10 minute blocks in Bitcoin. So it's, there's no way he could compete with the ASICs, with the hardware that the Bitcoin miners use. But it's important to note that SHA-256 is not a secret. What happens to that algorithm, anyone can do. And this is what he's doing on this piece of paper. So it's not, it's not classified. Fortunately, there are these online tools that allow you to hash anything. So what I've done here is I've stuck in an input. I've used Bitcoin Pizza because today, May 22nd is Bitcoin Pizza Day when Laszlo paid 10,000 Bitcoin for two Papa John's pizzas. That's currently worth something like uh, $290, $300 million. So those turned out to be very expensive pizzas. But anyway, this is why I'm using Bitcoin Pizza as my input to SHA-256. It then spits out a hexadecimal number down here. And we can see that if we change it just a small amount up here, if we say bits, Bitcoin uh, P-I-Z-Z -Z. instead, the number is completely, the number below is completely different. The hash is completely different. So let's leave it right there. We're going to copy this hexadecimal number. We're going to drop it into a hex to binary converter, and then we'll get an example of the binary, uh, the exact same number expressed in binary. Down here, we can see the exact same number expressed in decimal. And again, this binary number is 256 bits, which means it's 256 characters. We can see that it begins with a one, then followed by a zero, followed by a one, etc. Now the odds of getting a zero or a one at the beginning is 50%. So this this first this first uh, placeholder can only hold a zero or a one. So there's a 50% chance, let's say, of getting a zero here. If you want to get two zeros, it'd be a 50% chance times a 50% chance, so a 25% chance. If you want to get three zeros, it would be um, it would be that multiplied three times, so a 12.5% uh, chance, I believe. So it becomes more and more difficult if, and there's a much lower probability that what gets spit out of here is going to have a lot of zeros at the beginning. This is what uh, the Bitcoin miners check for. So what exactly do they do? They try to guess some data that can be run through the SHA-256 hash function twice, and that the, will then spit out a result or a hash that begins with the correct number of zeros. What I did here was a shortcut. I only did uh, ran it through once, but you, you technically have to do double SHA-256. I'm going to keep it simple though in these examples and just run the input through once. Technically, the hash needs to be less than a certain number. That's another way of saying that it needs to have a certain number of zeros in front of it. And this is adjusted depending on the Bitcoin difficulty level. The more zeros at the beginning, that you require, the more difficult it is to find uh, this number, for the Bitcoin miners to find this number. If we take a look at the Bitcoin blockchain, here's a block from yesterday uh, that I selected. This is block 737, 363. And there's a lot of interesting data in here. We can see the hash function right here. If we copy and paste this, we can see that this particular, at this particular point in time, you needed uh, the, the protocol because of the difficulty level required that it had 19 zeros at the beginning, that this hash that was spit out of SHA-256 needed to have 19 zeros. The, the, the protocol doesn't really care what these numbers are, but you have to basically roll the dice until you get this number of zeros at the beginning. And as we said, that's very difficult, that you have a 50% chance of getting one zero at the beginning, 50% uh, chance of uh, or twenty-five percent chance of getting two zeros, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and so this is becoming a vanishingly small uh, chance of getting uh, this many zeros, nineteen zeros at the beginning. So let's let's do our own Bitcoin mining here. Let's do our own SHA-256 hashing. Let's say that that the protocol makes it really easy for us, 
and that the current difficulty adjustment tells us, or the current difficulty level tells us, that we need to come up with a hash, in other words, an output that's spit out of SHA-256, that starts with 2, 0. So I'm going to start with, uh, I'm just going to use Trader University. Let's say we have to use Trader University followed by a 1. In, in, in practice, this, the, what, what you start with here is actually going to be the contents of one of the blocks, and we might talk about that in another video. But let's just say we have to start with Trader University, and then the race is everyone needs to add a number to that, and all the Bitcoin miners are competing to do this. So I'm first going to test out Trader University followed by the number one. And again, SHA-256 is such that no one, no one knows what it's going to spit out. It's very difficult, or it's impossible to predict what it's going to spit out. You actually just have to try it. You have to try different numbers. So I might try Trader University 1, Trader, Trader University 2, Trader University 3, Trader University 103,456, etc. And this is what Bitcoin mining machines do. They basically guess numbers and run them through SHA-256 twice. Here, again, we're only running it through once. But if we do Trader University 1, let's say we copy this. We're going to copy and paste it. We'll go back to our converter here, and we will paste it right here. We'll click Convert, and then we're doing this to check how many zeros it begins with. Unfortunately, it looks like this one begins with a 1. We're supposed to have two zeros at the beginning. We have a 1 at the beginning, so we have to go back to the drawing board, and we have to try another possibility. So let's try Trader University 2. Again, this is what Bitcoin mining machines do really quickly. We'll take the hexadecimal number, and um, we'll convert it to binary so we can see how many zeros it begins with. We'll try it one more time. Click. Well, it looks like this begins with three zeros. So we, in this case, we hit uh, the jackpot faster than I was expecting. I was going to use an example here of uh, running this many hashes. So basically, whatever this really big number is called. If we put this through SHA-256, let's just uh, copy it here. We'll go back to the calculator. We will paste it in here. That will hash it for us. And then we'll copy this. And remember, we're trying to get two zeros at the beginning of the decimal, I'm sorry, of the binary number. So let's put in that that uh, output from SHA-256, click Convert, and it turns out we got two zeros. So what I did before was I just experimented. It looks like I didn't try Trader University 2. Uh, I tried a much bigger numbers. But either way, this way gets us two zeros at the beginning. So what this means is we have found the number that is the correct number, that has the correct number of zeros at the beginning for the particular difficulty level, what I can do now as a Bitcoin miner, if I was actually doing this, is I could broadcast this number to the entire Bitcoin network. And they could check. And if it turned out that I was right, which it looks like I am, I would then get the block reward and I would get to produce, uh, I would get to produce that block. And the way people can test this is I just give them the input here. I basically just give them this number, which you might call the nonce if you're using Bitcoin terminology. And anyone, any node, any other miner can plug this in to SHA-256 and say, and say, okay, it gives out this hexadecimal number. I convert it to binary. It does have two zeros. So that means I basically won the race to produce the next Bitcoin block and add it to the blockchain. So this is what Bitcoin miners do. It's kind of a silly thing. It uses a lot of electricity. But what it does is it ensures that no one group or one person can control the network. This is why it's so important. Now, it does this many different times. So each time I, I ran something through there, you could consider it a hash. It took me maybe five or 10 seconds to do a hash. But when we look at what the Bitcoin network is doing, the hash rate, the average hash rate over the last 90 days down here, if we look, is 207.8 exahashes. How much is an exahash? An exahash is one quintillion hashes. So it's currently doing 207, 208 quintillion hashes per second. These are very specialized machines, these Bitcoin miners. They're basically these single, these single boards that run, they, they're built to only run SHA-256 or some variant of double SHA-256. And what they're basically doing is they're trying to guess the number in the same way that I was doing this. I was just adding different numbers to trade a university to try to, try to create an output that in binary had two zeros at the front of it. This is all the Bitcoin miners do. And this is what they burn electricity to do. So what, what's our conclusion? Well, saying that the NSA controls Bitcoin because it invented SHA-256 is very similar, actually, I think, to saying like something like the Muslims control algebra because they invented it. 
yeah, I know, I know that the Babylonians and Indians and Greeks and Chinese all contributed to algebra too, but traditionally uh, Muslim civilization is given, Islam is given uh, credit, credit for this uh, Islamic civilization. And so this is one of those talking points that you get from altcoiners who say that somehow the, the NSA controls SHA-256. Again, they don't control it. It's not a black box. It's a gift to the world, in this case from the NSA, just like algebra was a gift from Islamic civilization. Anyone can look up the details of how SHA-256 works. Again, it's not a government secret or a black box. If you found this video helpful and enjoyed my teaching style, you're going to love my paid Bitcoin course. So what I encourage you to do if you found this video helpful is to first watch all my free videos on YouTube and then when you're ready to level up and really uh, maybe you reach the point where you own a lot more Bitcoin and you want to really understand it at a deeper level, you want to learn how to buy it anonymously, how to do coin joins on it, etc. How to store it in your own multi-sig vault that you built. At that point check out my paid courses. I have probably 15, 16 trading courses on this website, but in particular, you'll be interested in the Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin, where I talk a lot about the theory of Bitcoin, empty block attacks, why Bitcoin is so volatile, how to buy Bitcoin anonymously, everything else, how you need to how to run your own Bitcoin node, how to hook up a hardware wallet to your node and create a multi-sig vault, etc. So it's a very extensive course. You also have access to all of my other courses for the same low price. So if you're interested in trading options, trading futures, trading stocks, uh, momentum stocks, IPO stocks, swing trading, etc. It's all covered there as well. And again, check out my free, mat free material first. And then when you've exhausted that, check out the paid material when you're really ready to level up. And if you decide to do that, you can click on the link in the description notes below. It'll take you to the Bitcoin course where you can sign up for all the courses. And when you do that, be sure to use the coupon code YT99, as in YouTube 99, to get the best price and the best deal. It's normally $125 per month uh, for 30 days access. If you use YT99, you'll get the whole thing $26 off. So you'll get access to everything, all 15, 16 courses, including the Bitcoin course for just $99 for 30 days. There are no long-term contracts or anything like that, so you can cancel before 30 days are up and not be charged again. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.